My friend Ole Belo, an architect in Sweden, took this photograph of an existing downtown building and he turned it into this hybrid rendering showing a new emphasis on the streets and the storefronts. And then he invited me to say what I might do to just punch it up a bit. And I did this rendering. And so this video is going to show you, first of all, Ali's process. And then second of all, I'll show you how I punched it up and um, have some fun. So Ole begins the process as you normally would. He takes the photograph and puts a sheet of opaque white over it, translucent white, and then he finds the vanishing points by just tracing some dominant lines that go back uh, parallel into the distance. Then he adds the verticals. He's doing all this in drawing assist. So he's adding the verticals quickly. He's extending the roof because he's going to get rid of that overhang in the front. And he's basically mapping out the parts of the building that will stay. But now he gets to the part of his design where he's redesigning these storefronts to make them more interactive with the street, presumably. And um, he's tracing that in. And he's noticed that he's adding people from a previous render, which is a great time-saving technique. And now he's going to add this signage. And I think he's doing that in the uh, appropriate uh, font and type font facility, which is great. And now he creates a network of parallel lines in a separate layer and stretches them into perspective to give the facade that kind of brick texture. And he's going to add some line work back there in the distance and poke, poke out the trees just a little bit more so you can see them. And he continues to develop the people here. Now he's using the same line technique to begin to add character to the street, to add the paving lines. He's playing with just a little basic color adding some lights to the cafe, adding the sky in the background, and then trimming it to the uh, building. He's added some basic washes of color, and now he's, he's back to design. He's working on that planter in the foreground, and that, that looks like pretty good. I don't know if he keeps that in the end, but we shall see. He's uh, adding backlight to the signage with a soft airbrush and a little white glow behind him. And he's going to start his shadows and add some some more character to the street. I really like that moment there. And now it's the old uh, classic thing where you bring in a photo of people that are doing just the kind of pose that you need and you trace them, cut them out, add them, add your own hand rendering to it to make them seem like they belong more in the hand render drawing. He's, you can see he's using a very nice watercolor technique to add color to their clothing. And he's also simultaneously cutting them out with a selection tool so he can place them and the things behind them won't show up. So he's punching up the interiors a little bit there, moving the people around, still making some design decisions of whether to go with planters or railings, that kind of thing. And um, that's pretty much Ollie's version of this rendering. Now, I want to make it clear that I love this rendering of Ollie's, and he's shared a lot of these sketches with me, and he does really well with his clients. They really respond to these hand renderings, often to the exclusion of computer renderings that are at the same meeting. But I'm gonna, I promised him I'd show him a few things that I thought could punch it up in just uh, half an hour or so, maybe even faster. So I'm starting by adding a sheet of... Um, opaque or translucent white because I just want to sketch out what I'm thinking about doing here, okay? And that's to show Ollie and the rest of you how I look at these things. So we really want to emphasize this street here because that's where most of Ollie's new design has happened. So I'm just kind of tracing these things. I'm going to add a little tone to them so I can begin understanding it myself. I, I don't have the answers in my head ahead of time. I'm just kind of looking at this just like you are and wondering where I could add emphasis or basically try and tell the same story Ali's telling it, but just tell it a little bit punchier with the graphic experience that I have. So I'm going to add a second layer above this red line layer, and I'm going to go this time with a flat marker, almost like a big flat watercolor brush. And I'll use black, and I'm just going to use this to develop the contrast and uh, maybe place some shadows that will help guide our eye or help compose this and frame the, frame the story, frame the drawing. So by making these darker up there, I'm going to add some punch against the sky and I'm also going to play down 
this right side of the drawing. Uh, you can see I'm staying away from that zone of interest there. Just I'm not going to be that literal about it in the end. And maybe the foreground has some kind of a shadow, some way of framing the activity, keeping it um, constricted just to this area right outside all of the storefronts. And a lot of this is just testing. I'll go over this thing because there's there's no harm in doing so. And I'll experiment like I'm making that arched opening darker back there. And I don't necessarily know ahead of time if this is going to work, but I, I like what I'm seeing. I like the way that these windows are getting some depth now by doing that. And um, part, of, part of the reason for using the black and using the flat marker is so I don't get precious about it and put a lot of time in. I can just keep trying ideas. If it doesn't work, I'll just double tap with my fingers and get out of it. But I'm kind of liking this. Um, originally, I thought I want to see everything inside the windows because they, it's a big part of the design, I'm sure. But uh, that, that, maybe that can still be accomplished. Now, I'm changing the direction of Ole's shadows. I'm actually going to make them go back into the picture plane. And you can see I'm guesstimating where that vanishing point is because the sun, of course, always has its own vanishing point, the parallel rays of the sun. So I'm going to track these shadows back in there. Again, just sketching them out very loosely. This whole building on the left will throw a shadow in, and I think I can use that shadow to simultaneously lead the eye in and also pop out these figures in the foreground. Okay, and, and I think I can play down these windows up here too because they're a little distracting being that bright. And I wouldn't make windows uh, that yellow color uh, during the day. I, I'm all for the idea of abstract drawings and using colors that don't necessarily make sense to help tell the story, but I'm going to make them a little more conventional here. Uh, I like this shadow, so I'm going to punch that up even more. And I want to make sure the overhang still reads up there. And it might look good to have a tree shadow to lead the eye in and to do this uh, instead of having a very distinct shadow in the foreground, which might be distracting. Um, let's see, and definitely shadows under these people, because uh, I really want to pop out the entourage that Ole's put in there. Uh, I think it looks great. I think it's a big part of the charm that these drawings have. So let's add a layer now. There's that uh, black and white layer. Let's um, see what it looks like when it's superimposed over the original drawing. And this is, uh, this is head scratching time. I'm trying to figure out my next move. Not really sure what it is. Um, you know, the shadows we've just mapped out were so quick and so simple that I think what I'm going to do is the old uh, select and fill process. So I've gone up to the selection tool in freehand and I've activated the color fill down at the lower right there, just under my wrist. And now I'm tracking around with that freehand tool. And as I complete that, that layer fills up, but because it's in multiply mode, it shows all the detail under that shadow. And of course I can always adjust that shadow later. That's, so it's a gray violet shadow. It fills the whole areas that I'm selecting, but I can change both the hue and the saturation and even the brightness and contrast of that later uh, using the adjustments tool. But for now, it's uh, there's something about that black shadow that we added that was so simple. And um, I did promise Ole that whatever techniques we did would be something they could do very quickly. So um, let's let's see that through to its logical conclusion. So I'll speed this up a little bit because I'm going to go through and select all those same areas. Some of them are going to be in freehand and you can see color fill is selected. And you remember this technique from our videos on YouTube where we literally use the freehand selection tool to kind of, well, we're actually drawing with it, believe it or not. And you don't have to be uh, perfect or calculate these shadows scientifically. There's just something about if you get close, they really seem to uh, come alive. And I'm obviously ignoring the shadows that Ole put in there because I don't have his original file. So I'm not going to worry about those. Let's just concentrate on the new shadows that we're adding. And as I said, I'll speed this up now and I'll pop in for commentary as needed. So I'll finish up 
all of these shadows under the people and now I'll track over with that shadow that big shadow under the building on the left hand side and I'll I'll come in there later and I'll erase out where that shadow crosses those people but again I'm, I'm trying to work from big to small here so here's my first pass at what might what might serve as that foreground shadow and these are always a little tricky because um, they look too literal it, it looks too sharp right now so i'm going to come back and work on that but in the meantime let's let's erase out some of that so you can see what i mean by the way the uh, figures will pop out the brighter figures will pop out against that shadow so again a, a pretty quick technique and i'll come in here and it, it helps to uh, pick out things under the people and that kind of thing it really pops them out so um you can see the advantage of doing that. I'll focus in here a little, zoom in here a little. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do. Let's let's make the sun come down through those windows at an angle. So that should introduce uh, immediate depth to those windows. As they get back further, I won't worry so much about calculating that angle. But these two in the foreground, these are important. So I'll, it make, basically, I'm trying to make it look like that sun is slicing down at the actual angle that it, that is occurring on that day and again that dark area really serves to pop those people out let's track around those other people um, i'm not sure about the color of the window that results when we add that gray violet in multiply mode so we can come back and adjust that later but again i'm just trying to work as quickly as possible and get all these uh, because i the more the more quick this is, the more convincing I hope it'll be to Ole. And we can come back here. And and I do really love this idea or this whole experience of painting with a selection tool. And the other great thing about this is I can come back in and uh, I put all of this on the same layer. But I'm going to actually make sure I'm in that layer right now. And I'm going to pull out the infill that I put over the windows from basically from the street up because um, as I said I'm thinking about I want to have the versatility of changing that color later I don't necessarily want them always to be this dull gray violet which basically turns into gray completely so I'm going to track around and try and pick out only those window shadows I remember now that I put those shadows under the windows there and I don't want those so I'll work around those that's a little mistake there I'll backtrack but I don't want to go backwards so uh, let me just keep going and I'll deal with that later so here's the freehand line around the last window and I'll tap them to close it up and let's pick up these as well just with four taps around the corners I'll use three fingers to cut and paste and that you you recall that that means those shadows go on their own layer and I can put that layer into multiply blend mode as well but the first thing I'm going to do is select it I'm going to select this blue color in the sky and then select the contents of that layer that I just separated out and now I'm going to fill that layer with that blue sky and watch what happens here it's very cartoonish, but you already get the feeling that it kind of brings the building and the, and the sky and the atmosphere of that day together a little bit more. And you can also see how dark the lower street windows are. But again, I can adjust that. And I actually like that, too, because it's making it very dark. Uh, dark isn't the right word. It's making it very deep and engaging. And it's popping out Ole's wonderful entourage to make it even more visible. And I'm the first to admit this is not everybody's taste. My, my renderings tend to be more contrasty and maybe brighter in color than a lot of people's. So take all of this with a grain of salt. And I'm tracking out. I'm going to actually pull out that shadow, those ground shadows as well. I'll track around and close that up. Three finger swipe, cut and paste. They go into their own layer. Remember that has to be turned into multiply mode one more time and now I'm going to go into the Gaussian blur and we talked about getting rid of how overly precise that was so 
check out the Gaussian blur. You can just soften that edge. And if it gets too soft, it looks like it doesn't belong in the rendering. It's kind of a careful balance. But if you just, just do it a very little bit around the edges, it'll soften it and kind of keep it from being quite so distracting. Now that shadow is making me seem, uh, or making me think there's a lot of contrast between the shadow and the street. And I know always actually thinking of making the street a light color like that, but I'm going to add a layer and just try and select all of that light colored paving. I'll use selection in automatic mode and I'll start tapping. And again, this is amazing. If you haven't tried it, you can see how it almost teaches itself. If, if you regulate that pencil and you go back and forth, wiggle it left to right. You can, you can vary the amount of uh, color that you pick up or the areas that you pick up. I'll just keep tapping my way around it and try and get all of it. I'm not going to be too precise. I'm not going to worry about the joints in between, but uh, I don't necessarily know that I'm going to change the color of the paving, but I want to have it as an option. I want to be able to report back to Ali that um, I've got his paving selected and that we can change the color. Now, in Ollie's original, he probably has that paving on its own layer, but I'm working just with the JPEG here. I don't have his original Procreate file. And that's all the more testament to uh, the miracle of Procreate, that I can do a reasonable selection based just on that JPEG and uh, without creating my own layers, basically, but without Ole's layers. So here we go. Let's... Um, that's all picked now, and um, I'm going to look for a kind of a warm gray. I guess this is going to be a cool gray to replace it with. I've got that selected, and um, I have to go now to the layer that I wanted to add that to. I'll turn it back on, and I'll go to the fill layer selection, and you can see it did a pretty good job. Of course, it's in normal mode, so I go to multiply mode to see the detail underneath. But not a bad job, especially if you've got a quick meeting coming up and you have a client that suddenly needs a different color paving. So, But I'll adjust that, and I'll leave the uh, rest of the adjustments for Ole so he could turn that into a terracotta color or a warm gray or a cool gray, whatever, whatever worked for him. Now, we haven't gone over this operation a lot in our YouTubes, but I want to show you this amazing feature in hue, saturation, and brightness, where you can tap that little triangle and pick pencil mode. And what that does is it tells Procreate that whatever, whatever pixels I affect with this pencil or brush across this pencil, proactively, I want you to brighten them. I'm turning the brightness up, so uh, it's going to brighten them. And I could have turned the brightness down or I could have changed the hue or the saturation. But I'll just wash that over just like a real airbrush. And you can see it is lightening only the area that I swab down with those uh, with that pencil, only the area that I'm brushing with the pencil. And that's giving the effect that the natural light is coming down through that gap between the buildings and brightening just that spot. So that's going to emphasize the... Uh, Ale's new design even more. It's going to bring more more focus to that so he can really sell his ideas. And of course, it's uh, the contrast is getting a little crazy now, so I'm going to lighten that foreground shadow and maybe desaturate a little bit because the, uh, the violet part was a little bit too strong and distracting. But again, uh, infinitely adjustable in Procreate, both the color and the brightness. Now, these windows have um, been a problem for me, not because of uh, anything that Ole did. I kind of love his uh, warm, warm yellow-brown inside there, but it doesn't look great with my uh, overlay of that gray-violet. So let's try the same thing. I'm going to try and use that selection brush in automatic mode, and I'll pick up what I can, and clearly it's a lot tougher this time. And um, it would be great to have Ole's actual Procreate file. But uh, I'll speed this up so you don't have to suffer through this. And um, let's see, let's see how successful I can be.
And again, this will be completely unnecessary with your drawings because you will have your windows and your store interiors on a separate layer. But it can also show you how if you are, say, adopting a photograph and you want to alter the photograph and it doesn't have separate layers, you're going to want to do something like this sometimes to pick up particular parts of the photograph. Now it's head scratching time again and this is a glimpse behind the scene at my studio because uh, now that I've done that I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Uh, you can see it's there on its own layer and I can of course select that. Let's, let's first start by selecting it and maybe changing it to a different color. So uh, I'm going to duplicate that original photograph just so I don't mess something up. and. Now I'm thinking, actually, you know what? I'm going to pull that selection out of the original photograph completely. So you can see that that's gone now. And the new layer has got the uh, color for the, uh, for the windows. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it with this blue color. And there it is. There's the old robin's egg blue from the sky. And that isn't quite right. Let me turn it back into multiply but now I'm remembering that I've got it over white to begin with so multiply isn't going to make a difference so this is like I said a little glimpse behind the scene I think what I'll try instead is turn the original photograph back on and this blue layer that I pulled out I'll just play with the opacity and so because I really want to see the inside of uh, the store windows in Ole's new design and I'm sure that's a big part of the design a big part of why the uh, developer loves a sketch. So when I turn things back on, it's not so bad. It's got a very lusty, darker blue color. It's making for a wonderful depth behind there. It also looks like a very happy, bright summer day in Sweden. Um, Ole, you'll have to tell us whether that ever happens. I'm pretty sure it does. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. We don't have a lot of time for um, second guessing in these exercises. So I'm going to look around again at this whole rendering, the whole effect that we've achieved so far. And here's that layer of the uh, gray that we did for the paving of the street. And um, it just is coming across as light to me. So I'm, I'm going to go back to the layer, play with the brightness and just the sliders here. See, egg, not so bad, right? Um, I know, I'm pretty sure that uh, part of Ole's design is for those to be very light, and uh, that would certainly be a fantastic thing for reflecting light into his design, if that is his intention. Um, so now I'll go up here, and let's remember we talked about making those shadows and wanting to come back and adjust them a little bit, and I think that shadow is just too dark. I'm duplicating it to protect a safe copy of the layer, not to make it even darker. And I'm going to go into the famous Nikki Roll brush now. And you remember this is one that's got a wild random texture. And I'm using it in eraser mode. You can see that at the top right, the eraser icon is chosen. And I'm going to lightly brush that Nikki Roll brush over this whole shadow just to kind of throw some light in to create the illusion that bounce light is coming up in there. And to have the extra benefit of giving it some character, giving the building a little texture inside of that shadow. Uh, it doesn't really matter if that's not the literal texture of that building, but it's going to, uh, it's going to give some relief to the eye and suggest texture, even if the observer is not uh, explicitly aware of it. So I do like to use that Nikki roll brush again to uh, add characters to some of these shadows. So I'm looking around at the rendering now. What else can I do that would be fast and instructive for all of you? And I'm looking at these windows at the top left of the composition in this building next door. And I think I'm going to go into brightness and saturation in pencil mode. Let me show you that again. At the top left of the screen, I'm going to tap on the adjustments button. Then I'm going to choose Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, but I'm going to tap this little black triangle here and choose Pencil, and that tells me, or that tells Procreate, that whatever pixels I alter with this pencil, and usually I use the pencil in airbrush mode, 
Whatever pixels I alter, I want you to, in this case, make darker. So you, I, I slide the brightness down, and then I choose the size of the brush, and I just go ahead and apply it. Now notice it makes the windows a different color, but then you have to go back into hue and change that. Uh, it's a, kind of a long explanation of why, but just keep in mind that all three sliders still work. So that pumped up that darkness pretty good. I, I didn't mean to create more contrast there. I just kind of meant for it to be, I guess, to anchor that corner of the composition, something like that. And this adjustment of hue, saturation, brightness, and pencil mode is something I use quite a bit. So let's go back to the layer where we darkened the street or where we added some gray to the street. Let's do the same thing. Pick hue, saturation, brightness, tap that little black triangle, and pick the pencil mode. Adjust the pencil. I've already turned down the brightness because I want to make this a little darker and richer. Maybe give it some character. And um, I'm also not putting in perfectly even strokes. So you can make, it's interesting. It sort of adds kind of a natural organic texture that some of those paving blocks are darker than others. So again, this is a, a great tool. Just to lock that one away in your repertoire. And let's see, what else can we do here? We're on the home stretch with Ole's rendering. Again, I want to emphasize I loved Ole's rendering as it was, but this is just more of the way as a, as a commercial renderer for all those years. I suppose I was used to giving my clients just a little more punch. Um, so let's look at this entire side of the building. Um, I'm wondering if I tamp that down in brightness. Here, there we go. I used color fill to fill it with the gray violet that was loaded into the palette ahead of time. And again, these are just ways to study your rendering. And I learned so much over the years by practicing in watercolor, but watercolor you can't undo. And here we are in Procreate and I can do things and then undo them very easily in a matter of seconds. So. That's not bad. And remember, that's throwing the, the main point of interest back to that central street so that the left side of that building is, is full of sun now and the red is, of course, a little bit brighter. And we basically tamped back the right side of the building. And once again, uh, notice that the eraser mode is on at the top right and I am using that same Nikki Roll brush to add some character and interest inside that shadow so it's not quite so flat and it kind of entertains the observer's eye uh, even if they're not aware that they are being entertained which is an odd thing about renderings and art in general. So I'll take a step back again and uh, turn off that layers menu just see the whole composition and let's press and hold that little checkbox in the original Ole rendering layer and look at that and I'll squeeze it off to the side here I'll press and hold again and bring the new layers back over. And uh, again, Ollie, uh, fantastic rendering that you did. And I'm just trying to show you some options. And especially as it relates to telling the story that you want to tell. So in this case, the story I chose was to feature this central street district of the drawing that you did. And going back to that red line diagram, with that uh, translucent layer of white in there, you can see that we circled that. That was our major interest. And hopefully we achieved that. So it has been a pleasure, Ole Bello, and I want to invite everyone else to um, share your work if you want to in the link in the description below. And I will uh, look forward to seeing your work as well.